The Five Nights at Freddy's franchise now has a total of 11 different games that create a deep and complex story, and within that story there are many mysteries that remain unsolved to this day. The franchise is known for having iconic mysteries that have remained unsolved for almost 10 years, and three of these unsolved mysteries stand out as some of the most complicated and prominent mysteries from the entire series. There are countless theories in all of these mysteries, and in one of my last videos I combined solving three of the most popular mysteries from the franchise into one video. And in this video, I'm going to combine three more of the most popular theories from the franchise and I'm going to finally solve them definitively. So in this video, I'm going to solve the character of Miss Afton, who is Golden Freddy, and more specifically, how many souls possess this animatronic, and finally, I'm going to answer who we play as in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. So let's get started and finally answer these iconic mysteries. Starting with a mystery about a character that has little to no information about, let's attempt to answer one of the most mysterious characters from the Afton family, Miss Afton. Starting with the most popular theory and the one that is essentially regarded as canon or confirmed by the community, which is that Miss Afton is actually Ballora from FNAF Scissor Location. The reason fans started believing in this theory is because of Ballora's very human characteristics and because of certain voice lines in Scissor Location. It's believed that William Afton murdered his wife and stuffed her body inside the Ballora animatronic which gave her life. But most of the assumption for this theory comes from Scissor Location as many fans make the argument that Ballora seems like some sort of mother figure throughout the game. Some fans even go as far as saying that Ballora even talks like a mother which would make sense if it is actually Miss Afton as she would be talking to her own son, Michael. But in Security Breach, there was actually a piece of evidence that could be supporting this idea. More specifically, it was an easter egg. This easter egg of five staff bots representing the members of the Afton family, with this one representing Miss Afton. Some people were quick to point out that the staff bot looks a lot like Ballora with their similar colors, which would essentially confirm they are the same character. So at the surface, this theory would be true, and it makes sense why this theory has been so widely believed for years now in this community. But besides this piece of evidence from Security Breach that really can be interpreted in any way, there just isn't any concrete evidence supporting this theory. There would also be no reason for William Afton to murder his wife, so unfortunately it isn't confirmed like many people assume. But moving on to the next theory, which is actually fairly new, and it's MatPat's theory where Miss Afton takes over Fazbear's entertainment after the FNAF 6 ending and had a goal in rebuilding her family. Now, this theory does a great job in not only answering who Miss Afton is and what her role was in the franchise, but it also answers one of the biggest questions from Security Breach, which is who takes over the business after FNAF 6. This is something the franchise has continuously been pointing at, and it being Miss Afton does actually make a lot of sense considering what we know about repeating themes and characters in the series. In this theory, she tries to bring back her husband, William Afton, in the form of Glitchtrap and Burntrap. We know she's successful as in one of the endings of Security Breach, we do see Burntrap come to life. I also think that this theory is the most logical answer to who Miss Afton is, and narratively, it also makes the most sense. But unfortunately, the FNAF Ruin DLC disproves this theory. In Ruin, we learn that the Burntrap ending isn't even canon, as it reveals the Princess Quest ending is instead canon, meaning that Burntrap never even existed. And with MatPat's theory, this was one of the main points. Without Burntrap proving that Miss Afton was bringing back her family, this theory just doesn't make as much sense. Sure, Miss Afton could still be in control of Fazbear's entertainment and is trying to bring back her family in another way, but with Rune's inclusion of new characters like the Mimic and Cassie, it's obvious that the franchise is moving away from old stories and characters like the Afton family. Which leads me to believe that Miss Afton isn't in control and instead it's possible that it's a whole new character. But moving on to the last theory, which I think is the least likely, is that Miss Afton does not exist in the franchise at all. Now, what fans mean with this is that obviously Miss Afton was alive at some point, but she just doesn't make an appearance in any game, mini game, or even as an easter egg. Before the release of FNAF Security Breach, this was actually somewhat true. Miss Afton was nowhere to be found, and even in this poster from FNAF 6 that depicts the Afton family, again Miss Afton is nowhere. There's this bear who is supposed to represent Fredbear, who we know is the crying child, there's the clown who is supposed to be Circus Baby, who we also know is Elizabeth Afton, and of course there's William Afton with his puppet, Michael Afton. If Miss Afton had played some role in the franchise, as Scott Cotton could have easily included her in this poster or anywhere else in this series, but he actually does, and this is why I think this theory is wrong. In FNAF Sister Location, it's believed that we do see Miss Afton through the TV series that Michael watches on his TV. In the show, we see two characters arguing with one being a man wearing a purple suit and the other being a woman with blonde hair and a green shirt. Now, it's believed that this is William Afton and Miss Afton arguing, which would make sense considering what we know about the Afton family. So, it's possible that this TV show was giving us a small look into what the relationship looked like. So, we do we actually get hints to her character, and like I previously mentioned, we do see Miss Afton in the Security Breach Easter Egg, so we know her character existed and had some impact on the story, but the question is to what extent? Well, my thoughts on this are just like many theories in the sense that it's all just assumption. And besides some subtle nods to this character, and besides just one direct confirmation of this character even existing, nothing is known about Miss Afton. It could easily be that she is Ballora or that she's in charge of the business post FNAF 6, but here are my thoughts. Well, I don't think she's Ballora since I don't see any motive for William Afton to murder 
murder her and stuff her body in this animatronic. And why would he even make an animatronic that looks like a human if he was going to stuff a body inside of it anyways? Instead, I think that Ballora is just inspired by Miss Afton and besides that, they have no real correlation. So do I think she took charge of the business and security breach and in ruin? Well, I don't believe in this either considering that Burn Sharp isn't canon anymore and although it makes sense narratively, I don't find a reason for her to take control of the business. We know that she had almost no impact on the overall franchise, so why would she randomly step back into the business when she already lost so much from it? It's even more random that she would appear again after all those years being away from it, which leads me into what I think. I think that Miss Afton did play a smart part in the franchise until she left William Afton after the death of Elizabeth Afton and stepped away from the business forever. Now I know that this isn't as fulfilling as many other theories, but to me it just makes the most sense considering the little evidence we have. To me it makes sense that she would leave after losing her second child and after losing William Afton to his work. And like I previously mentioned, her taking control of the business wouldn't make that much sense since there isn't a clear motive. But again, this is all just assumption. Moving on to Golden Freddy, let's attempt to solve who this animatronic is and more specifically how many souls are possessing this animatronic. All while also answering which soul possessed Golden Freddy at different time periods throughout the franchise. Starting with the very first FNAF game which was released back in 2014, Golden Freddy appeared as an easter egg that would randomly appear throughout the game. Images of different animatronics with the message, it's me, would flash rapidly on your screen before Golden Freddy would actually appear in your office. Then you would be jump scared by a still image of Golden Freddy and your game would crash as well. In the second FNAF game, Golden Freddy's appearance is essentially the same as the first one. He has a chance to randomly appear in your gameplay and if he does, he will sit in your office until he jump scares you and once more your game will crash. Again, only Golden Freddy's head attacks you which is an important detail I'll mention again later in this video. We then see Golden Freddy again in Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and more specifically we see Fredbear who is one of the earliest animatronics ever created. We also get Nightmare Fredbear which is just an illusion of Fredbear that tormented the crying child. Now though these iterations don't count as Golden Freddy, they still tell us a lot about the souls possessing Golden Freddy and I'll get back to these iterations soon. We then finally see him in FNAF Ultimate Custom Night as one of the 50 animatronics William has to face. It's the FNAF 2 version of this character and that's the version that jump scares you. But if you set all other animatronics to a rating of 0 and only keep Golden Freddy at 1 and then buy a death coin in the shop and then use it on him, you'll receive a unique Fredbear jump scare. This time it's a full body jump scare unlike the previous two jump scares and it's the Fredbear design with the purple hat and tie. Now on the surface, it may just seem like the one possessing Golden Freddy is the crying child as in the FNAF 4 ending, we saw him be thrown into the mouth of Fredbear by his older brother Michael which killed him. Which makes him possess the animatronic and want to get revenge on Michael for killing him and this is what we see in the first and second game. That's why we even see the message, it's me, in these games as it's the crying child reminding his older brother of what he did to him. Meaning that it was also the crying child who was torturing William Afton in a purgatory as he was the one who created the animatronic that killed him. And all of this would actually make a lot of sense but too many games disprove this and prove that another soul is also possessing Golden Freddy just at a different time. In the FNAF 2 minigame Give Gifts, Give Life, we see the puppet giving life to the animatronics and we see four souls paired up with the animatronics that their body was stuffed inside. This includes Golden Freddy as right before the minigame ends we see a fifth soul or dead body in the center of the room. This is then followed by a Golden Freddy jump scare insinuating that the soul belongs to Golden Freddy and we know that the soul is not the crying child. We saw the crying child pass away after the bite of 83 in the hospital and up to that point no murders had even happened. It wasn't until after the crying child's death that William Afton went on a murder spree by killing Charlie and the five children which included the one who would later possess Golden Freddy. And we know that this other soul is named Cassidy. We know this because her name was found in the survival logbook when it was first released. So now that we know for certain that two souls possess Golden Freddy throughout the franchise, now we can start to look at which soul was in control of Golden Freddy at different periods of the timeline. Starting with the first two FNAF games, it makes the most sense that Golden Freddy is the crying child. Like I mentioned, we know that Michael Lafton is the main security guard in both these games, meaning that it's the crying child tormenting him as Golden Freddy. Cassidy and Michael have no connection, so she would have no reason to attack him, but the crying child does and in the games we see him constantly reminding him of what he did. But the next time we see Golden Freddy isn't actually until FNAF Ultimate Custom Night and this is where I think we see Cassidy. The point of Ultimate Custom Night was to represent William Mathson being tortured in a purgatory by Golden Freddy and our proof of this are various voice lines from this soul. It Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Previously, I mentioned that it would make the most sense for this soul to be the crying child as he would be getting revenge on his father for everything. But the Happiest Day minigame disproves all of this. In the FNAF 3 Happiest Day minigames, you play as the puppet as you go through a birthday party. You pass various kids with different animal masks until you reach the end where you find a child with his birthday cake crying. Then the crying child is seen wearing a golden Freddy mask and that's when all the children disappear and their masks fall on the ground. The six balloons then fly upward signifying the souls of the six children being freed and finding at peace. Now this mini game is clearly supposed to represent the events of the FNAF 4 ending. We see a birthday party with various children wearing animal masks and at the face of it is the crying child. This makes sense as the crying child's happiest day was taken from him but in this mini game he's finally able to have his birthday party. This also means that the crying child's soul is set free and is no longer in control of Golden Freddy, meaning that he couldn't be the one possessing Golden Freddy during Ultimate Custom Night, which also means that the soul possessing Golden Freddy during Ultimate Custom Night is instead Cassidy, and I think what solidifies this is Golden Freddy's different jump scares. In the first two games, he only attacks the player with his head, and because this is the crying child, I think this is a parallel to him being bitten on his head. He's attacking his older brother with what he lost on that fateful night, but Cassidy was stuffed inside the body of Golden Freddy, and what jump scare do we see in Ultimate Custom Night? A full body jump scare, which represents what happened to Cassidy. But finally, what proves all of this is Cassidy's role in the newest games. From FNAF Security Breach to FNAF Help 1 2, we are introduced to a new character and minigame called Princess Quest. You play as the princess as you try to free Vanessa from Glitchtrap's control and that princess is actually named Cassidy in the game files. And if Willie Mafton really is Glitchtrap, that means that Cassidy is following Willie Mafton no matter where he goes, and this includes the virtual world. If Cassidy was torturing William in a purgatory but he was somehow able to escape, then it would make sense for her to go after him and defeat him for good. So with all that said, Golden Freddy has to be possessed by two different souls which are the crying child and Cassidy. They possess this animatronic in different time periods in the franchise. We know this because of their jump scares, mini games, and purposes. Now by no means is anything confirmed about Golden Freddy and the idea that he's possessed by two souls, especially because not much is known about this character in general. But I think this would make the most sense when looking at all of the evidence. But this is just a theory. Finally, let's answer who we play as in Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and why solving this mystery is crucial to the foundation and story of FNAF. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 was released back in 2015 and is praised as one of the scariest and best made FNAF games of all time. The use of nightmare animatronics in dark environments creates one of the most unique experiences in the entire franchise. Not only is this game one of the scariest, but it's also one of the most lore heavy games as we learn more about the Afton family and about the animatronics. But for years now, the community had agreed that most of this game's content has been solved or discovered and that included who we played as. But recently, fans have challenged this by saying we play as someone else from the franchise. So in this video, I'm going to go over why we don't play as the crying child in FNAF 4 and why we instead play as Michael Lafton. Let's get started. Like I mentioned, for years now, the consensus among the community was that we played as the crying child and that's what the game made obvious. In every cutscene, we play as the crying child trying to run away from the animatronics until we see him be thrown into the mouth of Fredbear by his older brother Michael which killed him. We then saw him in the ending where he passed away and where Willie Mafton gave his final words to him. And up to a certain point, no one had really challenged the idea that we played as the crying child in FNAF 4. It wasn't until the survival logbook and when people started to look closer into these game's details that people realized it doesn't make sense for us to play as the crying child. If anything, it made a lot more sense that we actually instead play as the crying child's older brother, Michael Lafton. We know the survival logbook book belongs to Michael as he signed his name, but what in this book tells us he's the main character in FNAF 4? Well, we know whoever we play as is the only person who would see the nightmare animatronics as they aren't real, but in the logbook we see a drawing of one of the nightmare animatronics, meaning at some point Michael must have seen a nightmare animatronic in order to include it in his book. But there's more proof. When looking at all of the rooms in the minigames, the crying child's room doesn't match up with what we see in the actual gameplay. He only has one door instead of two and the layout of his room doesn't match either. But we don't actually see Michael's room in any of the minigames, meaning there's a big chance his room would match with what we see in the gameplay. Speaking of the gameplay, the way this game works is a direct parallel to the gameplay in FNAF 1. In both these games, Bonnie attacks from the left door while Chica attacks from the right door. Freddy and Foxy have their own way of getting in this room and this parallel feels intentional. While playing, there's also a rare chance that you will hear a distorted version of the FNAF 1 Night 1 phone call.
Michael is the only person who has heard that phone call as it would be impossible for the crying child to ever hear it, so the phone call being in FNAF 4 is just more proof that Michael is who we play as. But using evidence from some of the newer games, FNAF security breach might confirm this once and for all. In Rockstar Row, we see artifacts from past events in past locations. This includes artifacts from FNAF 4. In one of the displays, we see these toys from the main character's room. But another theory that many fans believe in, including me as I've already made a video on it, believe that Michael Lafton is still alive and living in the Pizzaplex. If this is true, then it would make sense for him to want to display these toys as a form of nostalgia for him and as something to remember. Also using evidence from the latest tales from the Pizzaplex novel, we learn that the nightmare animatronics were actually real as they were mannequins on rails, but a gas would cause whoever was in that room to see the nightmare animatronics. And the person releasing this gas was Willie Mafton as a form of torture, but why would he be torturing the crying child? If anything, it makes more sense that he would be torturing Michael as he would blame him for the death of his younger brother, which again is just more proof. But finally, when looking at things in the point of the narrative, it also makes the most sense that Michael is the main character. Throughout FNAF 4, we are told that the crying child's plushies are his friends and that he mainly relies on them, so why would his friends be attacking him? And if they were attacking him, why would he still see them as his friends throughout the story? Besides FNAF 4, we know for certain that Michael is the main character in all the main games up until FNAF 6. He's always been the security guard and we know this because of names on paychecks and because of pages in the survival logbook. So if he was also the main character in FNAF 4, it would follow the trend of him being the main character and it wouldn't break it for only one game. So with all that said, we know we have to play as Michael Lafton in FNAF 4 as we have plenty of evidence from the survival logbook the latest pieces of media from the franchise, and because it makes the most sense narratively. Now, nothing is really confirmed about who we play as, but I think it makes the most sense that we play as Michael, even if it may seem like the game is making it obvious that we play as the crying child. Or it could even be possible that we actually play as both of these characters throughout the game, but I think it would be hard to tell when we play as what character. Or it could even be possible that we play as an entirely different character, as the Tales from the Pizzaplex novel mentions many victims of this torture experience. But because new information is still being released on this game, it might be possible that one day we'll get an answer to this mystery. But for now, this is all just a theory. So with all that said, these are my solutions to the character of Miss Afton, Golden Freddy, and who we play as in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I hope you guys enjoyed this video where I attempt to solve three of the biggest unsolved mysteries from the franchise and remember nothing in this video is confirmed and it is just a theory. But what do you guys think? Who is Miss Afton and Golden Freddy and who is the protagonist in FNAF 4? So make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this and thank you guys so much for watching.